Hi, I'm Michael. Grandkids call me Roo. Well, it works with my last name and I paint watercolor rooster. Um, I want to show you something that I've discovered in the last year and a half about bamboo brushes, and particularly some that I love called Yasutoma brushes. Uh, they've been around for a long time. But um, let me show you the layout that I have here. Ah, oh, there you are. No, so these are my reading glasses, my painting glasses, but let me show you what I've got. Here's the desk. This is what we're looking at this morning. This is where I paint. Um, I love watercolor brushes. I love, uh, you can see I have all kinds of them here. Most of these are American Journey brushes, but I love bamboo brushes and all these are Yasutoma brushes. Um, and they look like, oh my gosh, there's a lot of hair there and a lot of water is going to be moved. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint with two. I was going to paint with three brushes today. I'm going to paint with a, uh, a number one SW1 Yasutoma brush. There it is. And also a JB100 brush. I was going to paint with a three. I paint with one three and usually this JB100 most of the time. Um, I gave my number three away. And so here I am shorthanded today. And all these, I have a a four and a two and a zero and a 900 and it just goes on and on and on the list goes on in fact i love this brush too but i'm gonna resist the temptation put it over here um the uh what i'm gonna do the artwork with today i'm just gonna draw on this uh, piece of paper this is a one piece a uh, piece of 140 pound uh, this happens to be a fluid paper i use a lot of kilimanjaro this is uh, the Extreme Gel Pen, and it's made by uh, YNC, which is Yasutoma, part of their brand. Uh, it's called the Extreme Gel, and it's a uh, 0 .5, 0 0.5. Love this pen. It bleeds a little bit. And what I mean by that is put the water on it, it takes off a little bit. I'm going to use that, and uh, I may wind up using this uh, piece of bamboo pen here, which converts into a brush. It's kind of cool. Um, Yasutomi sent this in some of my brush order, and um, and I'm just going to dip it into a little bit of a sumi ink here and put a little ink in there. I like to have a little bit of ink in my drawings and let the water run with that too. Uh, I started using these brushes, and these brushes were designed, I think, for great calligraphy work, but I started using them because of the looseness and style, how I get to handle them, and also... Um, uh, just having fun with them. And, and people say, oh, they, 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 I'm afraid of them a little bit because they splash a lot of water and they're loose and they're quick and they're lightweight. And I go, yeah, don't you love it? Especially for my whimsical style. So here's what I'm doing. I've taped off a piece of uh, this paper. Um, I reach up here on my shirt. Let me, let me get it picture in picture here just so you can see. Uh, up here on my shirt, I, I had a piece of artist tape. I pulled it off of the roll, put it onto my shirt, uh, so that I'd get some lint on there. So when I put it on the paper, I'm just building a little bit of a, maybe, what's this, a three-quarter inch border here on this paper, just because I want it around this series of uh, little rooster paintings I'm doing. Now, when I get ready to pull that tape off, because it has some lint on it, it'll pull off gently, and I won't rip my pa paper, which will frustrate me at the other end of this thing. And watercolor shouldn't frustrate you. It should enliven you and drive you toward creativity. And be creative. I say think like an artist, and that's so important. So here we go. Uh, I'm just going to add a little music to this because I like to paint to music. I like to use my um, Yasutoma brushes as kind of a conductor um, one and uh, direct the course and just put paint in there and be loose and splatter. I'm going to sort of show you how I'm going to do this. Um, what I have on the desk is also a mason jar filled with clean water, and I have my colors. These are American Journey colors, and I just use tube colors and squeeze them out in here. I'm going to mix most of the color on the paper itself uh, and not here. I'll, I'll mix one color in here, and I'll show you and tell you when I do that. So I'm moving in kind of close. This is a little, only 18 by 24 is normally what I paint in. I don't need a big space. I paint flat. If I ever want to move water around, I don't tape my artwork down. I just pick it up, move it, shake a little water around, go from there. All right, so here we go. Uh, roll a little music, and uh, here, I'll just roll it right here. We'll just do this thing live as, as we are. So, and boom, here we go. Just going to draw a rooster. 
put his waddle there, his comb up here like so, drop his belly down, come in with his back. I sort of sketch like a paint, quick and furious. Let this come through here, build up a uh, little bit of back leg there, let it come down, and then let the foot come down right here. Three toes and one in the back just to give him balance. That's the way the rooster is. I'm going to have this other leg out here like this, and I'll show you why in just one second. Just building it up there. I'm going to put a brush in that. There we go. This is sort of how I sign a, a children's book I have. Uh, I sign them with an original painting. There you go. And I'm going to put a little bit of a, just some scribble down here, cross hatching, maybe a little bit of a shrubbery over here. And um, maybe just a little bit of a hackle coming in here. Maybe some hackle marks or some feather marks down in here. I think I'm done. Now what I'm going to do is, so this was with the extreme gel pen. I just sketched that root that quick. Um, my roosters really aren't known for their great art. They're known to, as storytellers. And so um, I'm going to take this Sumi ink and I, I'm holding this very carefully because I wear a white shirt. <laughs> Not because it makes me more careful, but because a great accident could happen at any time. I dip this pen down into the Sumi ink. Uh, this is pretty cool. And I'm just going to put some, a little bit of, I don't want much in here. I just want a little bit of this ink. That's probably more than I'll even need. I'm going to put a little spot right there just because I'll show you in a second. There, that's that's probably plenty. Watch what happens with this. I'm going to lay this pen over here because I don't want to dirty up my water with it just yet. I'm going to put the top back on this. I've got a paper towel here to control some of the water. So with an SW number one, Yasutoma brush, and with a... Um, a JB900 or JB100 brush. I don't have the three. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the uh, JB100, just wet it down. And here's what I do. I can carry a lot of water over. Uh, you can see me dipping it in the jar there. I'll usually wipe it down like so. I'll go dot, dot, dot. Um, just bring it down. But I'll also, if I feel like I have too much water, I'll just dab it a little bit on this paper towel. The sound effects are great. If you go, whoosh, 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 boop, boop, boop. It's just, it gets me in the mindset of what I'm doing. Look, I just dropped some water on there. You see that one drop? I just dropped it. So now I'm just going to shake some more on there like so. And I'm just going to start joining this together with my brush. And here's where, here's where you can just let the brush be a part of the music and uh, just start to pick it up when it starts here. I'll hear it coming in one second and grab myself some ultramarine blue and just dance it in there like this. And notice I'm not trying to paint like I'm painting a house. I'm just letting the brush dance. I want to go in and get some water. One, two, three, wipe it out. And I'll go up in here. First, let me do this. Let me, let me change brushes just for a second, and I'll get a little detail done. This is the SW1. Uh, wipe it off a little bit. I'm just going to go dip it in some of this Joe's Red or Permanent Red over here. Just get a little bit of red on the brush. I'm just going to go in here, and I'm still holding way back on the brush. I'm just going to grab some... Um, let the strokes kind of come down in there like so. Still dancing the brush. I'm not really being as careful as one should be. Why? Because I don't feel like I need to be. It's sort of my painting, and I like it kind of reckless. I'm going to put a little red in here. You see, I dropped some red right there. I'm not going to clean that out, and here's why. I'm going to go in here now, and I'm just going to dance a little water right in here like so. Just in a couple places. Maybe some down here. I'm going to go get some of this gamboge yellow. I'm going to come in and just let the yellow... Go in there and mix with that piece of red that I dropped and just create a little bit of orange. There's his beak. There's that. Um, you see where that one pen sort of ran out of the, uh, as my teacher used to say in the third grade, hey, son, you ran out of the lines. And I go, no, I'll just add the line later. It's okay. Uh, this rooster still using the SW1 needs a little bit of... Uh, bottom end color here. That's the part that lays on the ground underneath the tractor. I'm going to put a little bit of um, um, royal amethyst in there. And there was some turquoise. I uh, need a little bit of harbor gray. I think it's called French gray now. It used to be harbor gray. And I'm going to Maine. So I'm going to call it harbor gray up there while I paint. And um, a little bit of brown right in here just to break that up. And a little bit of dirt. You know, roosters are kind of dirty. Watch this. I'm just going to grab my other brush and top some dirt right in there like like so there we go just kind of splash it in don't you love how that happens 
Now, here's where I might mix a little color. So watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a little bit of my gamboge here. Let that music die just for a second. And I'm going to grab some of this gamboge. I'm going to put it in this pan over here. A little bit of the permanent red. And mix it in. I get this orange. You go, well, you could have just used orange. Yeah, but I kind of like to mix my own for the leg color. because, And there's, I added a little bit of that gray. Maybe a touch of brown right there. And I get just a little bit of a dirty orange leg color that I think is going to be good for the legs. Yeah, I'm kind of happy with that. Okay. If I wanted a little more yellow or a little more red or orange, I could put it in there. Maybe the other leg. Maybe this one's a little brighter and this one's a little denser. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm using that SW1. Even for a big brush, I'm still holding it back. I'm not down on the point. I'm holding back here and I'm just letting the brush dance in there uh, just like so. Is that cool? Um, Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab a little bit of green and come back in and build this shrubbery over here. And then I'm just going to do a little bit here. Uh, I'm not worried about the edge. Remember, I taped it. I uh, will grab a little bit of brown here and dirty the ground up a little and some Payne's gray, maybe. And then set right in there for just a touch of a shadow right there. And then just put a little dirt down there, too. Just like hit my brush on a brush without cleaning it out too well. I'm going to go in here and grab uh, some clean water, drop it on the edge right here. There's a little mess that I just made. I'll go in and just use my paper towels and eraser. Pick up in here. I'm going to go get a little bit of that blue and just let it dance up in the corners, just a touch of it. Um, and I might put a little bit of the sunrise that's coming up right there. You know, roosters, we like to paint when it's early. Um, all right, so I'm going to grab some of this uh, turquoise, beautiful um, Andrews turquoise. I call it Terry Tardy Turquoise on my painting show. Roodoodles.com is where you can find me. Now I'm just going to splatter some like he just splattered it. See that right there? Ooh, I like it very much. I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to come in and I'm going to put an eye right here in the roux and just a little eye behind him. And then I'm going to use my pen to just do some details. Okay. Watch this. I'm going to drop a little more yellow paint right here. Um, I um, just a touch. And I'm going to let that dry for just a minute. I'll put a little spot of this. It's, it's autumn here. Falls, leaves are beginning to fall. So I'm going to put just a couple uh, spotty little things around the leaves there. Um, I like this blue and this uh, orange coming together here. Um, I even like this paint. looks like he's trying to paint the sky. That's fine. If that's a little too much, you can go with a paper towel and just grab some of that right there. Take some of it out. It doesn't bother me. Um, these pens, this pen, I think, was not made to really paint over wet watercolor, but I got a dozen of them, so I'm going to put one to the test and lay it back down. What I'm doing now is I'm just a little detail. I'm going to put the toenails on. A rooster's got to have toenails for scratching into bugs. Um, everything, to me, is fodder for a story and a storytelling, and so that's kind of where my world is. It's, it's not so much seeing myself as an artist, just a painter, but as an artist, storyteller, an artificer, a blacksmith, and the things that I use to tell stories with. And this is just one of them. This rooster is going to have a caption. He's going to say something that's uh, hopefully going to connect him to people. And here's what I learned. If your art isn't connected to people, you're just going to wind up with a room full of art that doesn't go anywhere. So I'm not talking to you about selling as much as I'm talking to you about community and just having a fun community where you can create art and create fun pieces to give away. Um, now, if I want a little darker up here in this uh, tail, maybe some shadows underneath, I can just go in and get a little bit of lamp black uh, color, maybe just some right in here and maybe a little shadow on this leg right here. Um, I think I'm done. And, and here's the thing. I've left what I call holidays, the open spaces in there. To me, you can say, well, I can still see this line. You go, well, good luck. That's the kind of the way I do my art. Um, now, I'm just going to peel this tape off. And hopefully with the lint on it, it's going to peel off very nicely. And I'll uh, um, drop it in the trash, which is not a drop because it's a throw for me because that's kind of part of my shtick. I see if I can wad it all up and throw it and hit the trash can. Like so. Oh, missed. So now it's going to be on the carpet, but it's all right. So there it is right there. I'm going to turn it this way, and I'm going to take this pen, and I'm going to sign it right here. Rue doodles.com. I put an M on there for Michael, and I'll put a date, 921. It's still uh, September when I'm painting this. And so just some little follicles coming out. 
Uh, just the last little cleanups, there's some more veining in the feet. Maybe a little bit of grass with this pen, just uh, there it is right there, I love it. Maybe some hair follicles on the brush. And I see one thing that I wanna do, I wanna make this a true Yasutoma brush. There it is right there. So I'm just gonna go get a little bit of water and come down here and get a little bit of this, uh, uh, maybe a tan, just with a touch of yellow. Maybe a little more tan, and I'm just going to make this into a Yasutoma brush right there. But look, I pointed a little bit, but I'll show you something else that's fun. Just for a piece of detail that only you people who use these brushes would know. They're squared off on the back, and they have this little loop right here, this little brown loop. And you go, what's that loop for on the bottom of the... Well, it's to hang them up. That's what it's for. All right. So if you want to loosen up your artwork, and if you want to have some fun just dancing your... Uh, your brush to music. I use these Yasutoma brushes. It's a great company. Uh, they're actually uh, uh, KUSA Corporation, and they acquired Yasutoma, I think, in 2019. Uh, ben Yasutoma, Mr. Yasutoma, was bringing brushes in this country in 1954 and Asian art supplies. And he was he was a global importer exporter. He would send brushes in as the story, and this is the story I love. And he would uh, he would send Asian artwork in, good ink and good brushes, and then. He would use the containers and ship some snack food back to uh, Japan. I think that's great. Living in the South, bring it on. Um, and so that's the thing for me. I love that story that connects me to art. And you want to know how far back that was? 1954? He, was, he shipped the first brush in the year I was born. And now they ship brushes to me. And here's an old guy painting them and having fun and telling stories with artwork. And uh, use good color. Use good brushes, and uh, I'll see you later. Mm. And good tea.